Hey guys, welcome back everybody to the Hearthstone Program Tournament. Uh, it's time for our third match of the day. And we have a pretty special one, don't we, Nibsh? Oh yeah, we do. We have Farmir versus Gara. That's Gara right. best shaman, Gara best caster, and um, Gara best Mexican, as I heard. Gara best Mexican. Um, and we have Farmir, who's also a fellow German player, trying to see if they can fight for the title of the best German player that's not named 6-0. Uh, that's, uh, let's, let's just kind of toss them in there, right? These guys are probably the top three German players currently out there, along, along with Life Coach, as well as, uh, actually, there's a lot of good German players. Now I think about it, there's Toyda. Um, Vos Schema is also a really good German player. People don't really know too much about him. We have a German player on Cloud9 as well. Do you remember? Uh, Ecop. Ecop yeah, is German. That's, that's... I, I consider Ecop more Polish than German, just because that's where his heritage is. But he is primarily German too. That's correct. All right. So he um, a Polish player on Cloud Nine for sure. Polish Polish player on Cloud Nine. <laughs> That's Polish right. actually, German on. player. Isn't Ecop actually like on uh, like really high legend too right now? He's like ranked number two or something like that. I believe so. Well, yeah. Definitely. So um, well, yeah. Like Ecop is one of the best German players as well. But um, here, as I said, Garver's farm here. I'm both playing Druid and bringing Shaman again. So bringing Shaman versus Gara. That's brave. That's bold. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I have to say that I think Gara is in a very interesting spot with his lineup choices. I think he doesn't know what he likes anymore. He used to think like, Oh man, you know Hunter was so good. I should bring Hunter every time. But he recently hasn't been bringing as much Hunter as he'd like to. Uh, yeah, and I, I'm not sure what he necessarily expects from his opponent. I know Faramir, for example, he plays pretty general stuff too. You know, Paladin. I wouldn't be surprised to see him just play a regular Druid. Um, the Shaman yeah. is also more of a mid range thing because I know Faramir loves that class. Yeah. However, this is also the scenario where you could bring in something like Mildruid, like Agro Paladin, like Mech Shaman, and not be punished as hard because in the end, it just affects your standings. It's not an elimination match. I would not be surprised if we are going to see the same uh, thing uh, as we saw in Life Coach vs. Dog, where Faramir is bringing a standard lineup, a cookie cutter, uh, the decks that he really likes, and he played with them a lot. And Gara is trying to innovate because... Gara is known for, for bringing some crazy greedy decks and ideas. And uh, right now the players are ready and we're going to see a zoo deck from Gara and Farmir bringing, as you said, mid-range. Um, yeah, he long. loves his deck. He, I mean, he, he's the guy who really appreciates uh, the flexibility of Shaman the most. And I remember when we were practicing together, because I used to play Farmir a little bit in some best fives and whatnot. Uh, he'd always bring Shaman to the table, even when it wasn't very good, because it's just something that he's comfortable with. Now, yeah. Shaman's also struggled a lot because it doesn't have really a good identity. It's not as flexible as mid-range Druid, for example, or Paladin. Um, and it doesn't have the ability to be aggressive or even as defensive as some other classes. But what it does do well <clears throat> is um, sometimes Shaman just has the right answers to everything, because... Uh, you know, it's it's got a good mix of strong removal options with Hex. It can it's like one of the few classes that can deal with Doctor Boom mana efficiently, and uh, it's 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 like underrated in a lot of ways, but it's still in a really tough spot in the meta game. Nimsh, what do you think? Well, I think um, I agree with what you said, and you are in a tough spot unless you do have a Lightning Storm on this board, right. which only says that uh, in those situations, Shaman is actually doing really good. And um, what you said is, is definitely true. Like, Shaman doesn't have its uh, rightful place. I think Shaman is also behind because that, that the previous meta game was mostly Hunters. And Hunters were really good versus Shaman. So the deck was kind of not uh, used that much. But right now, with Green Patron just killing all those Hunters, maybe Shaman will actually come back. Like, Shaman was originally good versus Warrior. Um, I'm still not sure how good it is versus Green Patron because it's a totally different um, breed of Warrior. But um, I think it will come back. And um, we are jokingly saying that Gara is the best Shaman, but I, I believe like Farmir is one of the best um, Shaman players in the world because, as you said, he played it so much and he really appreciates the deck. Oh, absolutely. And um, 
I think uh, right now, Gara is... He's okay. He's, he's been doing okay, but his opponent's been able to scratch back onto the board. And when Shaman can have these many cards while being able to deal with the board pretty effectively, it's a really dangerous spot. Now, Dr. Boom might change all of that. The Boom Bots here, the RNG behind the Boom Bot damage is so, uh, like, the range is so crazy. Uh, it can do nothing or it can do everything. Uh, this Dr. Boom turn is the big deciding moment. Yeah, it is definitely a power play, but uh, it's it's not over for Gar. Like, he, not only he pushes Boom and creates this super difficult board for Farmer to deal with, he also has the Sea Giant as a follow up and that uh, in in Gang Boss. So um, Gara in a very good spot to take over this board, but it will depend on the on the Boom Boss. Abyss Surgeon is a great pickup for Gara. He will be able to get a better trade. Yeah, how do you sequence this now? You want to just keep keep. Uh, the Sea Giant is low as possible cost, so you want to play minions before it. But you can't play everything before that. I guess you just play Sea Giant here for two. It's as, as good as it gets anyways. Yeah, I think that's a very good play. Um, a two mana 8-8. Eight, eight. How good is that? That's pretty disgustingly good, man, if you ask me. He taps into Doomguard for next turn as well. And he'll and almost he certainly be able to play song. anything. Yeah, this is really bad uh, for Faramir. He needs a hex um, for that giant. He needs to deal with it right now. But Gar is just... This is why Zoo is so good. Like, you just put those waves and waves and waves of minions. Even though Ooh. that lightning storm looked... Oh, the hex <clears throat> top deck. That's exactly what he needed. But uh, yeah, as I was saying, like, early lightning storm put Faramir back in the saddle for one, two turns, and, and then Gar was able to just spawn the board again. Yeah, now he needs Lightning Storm number two, and even then he needs a little bit of extra luck here to make sure that it goes well. Um, yeah, Shaman just, it's like, it's done so well to this point, but this is the last push. Like, if he could shut this down one more time, like, as Drake into Lightning Storm, that would be the final way, but he just doesn't have it. 5, and 7, that be 10, it, right? 14 damage. That's, that's lethal right here. Or 15 damage. He can't even tap if he wants to. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? All right. So Gara is going to take game number one versus Faramir with that zoo deck. And um, that might be an important win because, you know, Faramir is bringing a lot of AoE-based decks like... Shaman, Paladin, I believe Druid is also ri running Ooh. Double Swive and Rafs. Um, but the Zoo is so powerful. Yeah, apologies. Uh, kind of caught me there. But yeah, um, I think the Zoo deck is uh, able to just swarm the opponents really effectively. And even if it gets shut down once by Lightning Storm or even twice by minions able to capitalize on it, uh, that Dr. Boom was so impactful uh, because it forced... You know, two to three cards out of your opponent, and the boom bash traded really effectively, allowing C Giant follow up to be absolutely insane. So, well done. And uh, that wraps up the first game here in the series. Farmir still has that Shaman and the Paladin and the Druid, three potentially three just mid range decks, trying to see if he can capitalize on, you know, maybe, maybe it's targeting a class like Druid. Maybe he can beat Druid really effectively. Maybe he can, um, you know, pressure a, a, a freeze mage. I don't know. It's like maybe Faramir has a specific plan, or maybe it he is, just said, "I want to play three decks at life." Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely the thing. Like he might be targeting Druid, but um, I, I do believe he's just playing the decks he's comfortable with. And uh, I, I just wanted also to mention that Gar was playing Doctor Boom in Zoo, so now Doctor Boom is playable and almost every deck like sometimes we even see it in a face hunter but it's more common in rogue now like oil rogue is is putting uh dr boom inside and now zoo is playing dr boom so it seems like whatever deck you build just start with dr boom and then add other cards and you'll be good all right sounds good well here we go druid uh up against the mage wild growth and uh, keeper of the grove that 
That feels really good. Until you realize that you have to actually uh, stabilize enough for <laughs> that to have a high impact. So wild growth here. Yeah, that's oh. something you really needed because this matchup is in favor of Gara of Mech Mage, and even Gara has the Water Elemental and Bl Bl Blinktron, which is amazing. But still, Farmer got cards that might help him to stabilize and uh, maybe even win. But for now, it looks great for Gara. Well, it depends, you know, like the mirror entity is also problematic as the game goes on. It doesn't get any easier unless you have Zombie Chow on the deck. And Gara and, has the Mad Scientist. Yeah. And now it's those things where it's like, oh, please don't have Fireball. That would completely ruin my day. Well, Whirling Blades is actually great as well. Oh, you're right. I forgot about that. It's excellent. He can't even coin it, so... Wow, such a powerful turn here. Does it make him vulnerable too much to swipe? I guess he doesn't really care about that. Yeah, it's still fine, uh, because you do clear that Belcher, uh, kill it to one, you have a lot of minions with more than one health on board. Swipe is obviously painful, but um, more than often you have to, like being an aggro deck, you have to take the gamble. Yeah. His only hope is that his opponent doesn't kill Snow Chugger and kills Mech Warper instead. But because he had to target everything down, then uh, this actually is a full board clear. And Farmir going for the card draw from Raph. He knows that Mirror Entity will be troublesome. There is this uh, Druid of a Claw. Worst case, he will have to charge the 4 4 into 4 4. Well, Water yeah. Elemental sets up for Blink Chun to be a lot stronger. Blingtron right here also has a pretty high chance of just taking out the Keeper of the Grove. Fiery War Axe versus, well, three charges. There's not many that has three charges. Oh, what is that weapon? Oh, jeez. What I does believe, it do? Is that, that, that's the thing that gets buffed if you have a mech, right? Well played. Okay. What is it? Is it the Cog? Master wrench or something? I'm not. I actually don't even play with that card at all. That it's a rogue. Like a I only know that it's a rogue card. Um, we can agree that it's a very terrible weapon to get from Blink Chun. <laughs> Light Justice would have been better. Yeah, because it has like four durability. Right. Whoa! Well, I guess it's against Harrison. <laughs> all right, so Farmer has to charge cat to cat. We have some cat fight here. Um. And then his hand is, is not that great with only spells, no minions. Wow. Anoyatron to protect the free six. Do you find it amusing that that uh, Blinktron has found its way in a, a competitive deck? Uh, like, it's not even, like, too much of a joke. Compared to how Blizzard originally... They, they even said that they designed Blinktron solely because everyone kept complaining that there wasn't weapons for each class. So they're like, okay, here's a way for everyone to play a weapon, but it's not really like that serious. I do find it amusing. And I, I think it's actually amazing how in Hearthstone the pro players can use those RNG cards, which are uh, like to control the RNG. Let's say Ragnaros has a lot of RNG, right? But if you clear the board, it doesn't. Sylvanas has RNG with taking the minion, but you can control that. And here with Blinkshon, you get RNG with weapon, but if your Just opponent is frozen, never going to strike you. Uh, Unless he has Blade Flurry, I suppose. <clears throat> but when is Druid going to use that? Oh, man. Innervate. Uh, maybe he will. Um, with Chromagus, was it? Like, just get the copies of cards? Or is it... Oh, Nefarian, right? Yeah, Nefarian. Nefarian is the way to do it. Dude. He has to swipe, innervate, force of nature to get rid of everything. And not to mention that there's still that mad scientist, which is going to yoink yet another mirror, mirror entity. entity. That's so painful. Especially if Gara gets Antonidas. He has that stealth waiting. Oh, come on. Dr. That's, uh, that's not Antonidas, but that's an amazing card. You just stealth the uh, Dr. Boom too, right? Uh, you can. Big <laughs> uh, Farmer is like, well, yep, of course you can do Dr. Boom as the only card. Wild Growth to Cycle. 
And uh, keep in mind that Mirror Entity is live, so whatever Faramir draws is not going to be helpful to him whatsoever. Pilot Shredder getting copied here. Well, unless it's a Do Doomsayer, so... No, that's, uh, that's lethal, I believe. Right? Oh, that's certainly this? lethal now. Uh, Why the Boombot hitting the damage the Doomsayer. Replacement. Oh, you're right, he could have gone for Doomsayer. Ah, whatever. Um... <laughs> Oh, actually, he couldn't have killed it because the most he can do is two damage with the hero power, right? True. Yeah, yeah. He couldn't force of nature because he wild growth first. Wait, but he he played the mac. He actually played the mac, so the weapon had plus three attack. Oh, because, right, you're right. He didn't have the mac. Yeah, so you do play the you he played pilot shredder and then he right. could attack into pilot shredder for a chance to get a doomsayer down instead of attacking into bomb. You're absolutely correct, Nimsh. Uh, Faramir could have went for that 1.5% chance, uh, but I guess it's one of those things where it's such a low percentage chance anyways. He was not looking for a way to win. He was just trying to move on, and Gara is one game away from winning the series 3-0 convincingly over Faramir. Druid can do it too. I mean, there's so many ways for Druid to win. I think like um, Druid right now has a 50% chance versus everything. Like... Druid Paladin is more or less 50%, Mirror Match, 50%, and Shaman. Midrange, I think, is also like really close to 50%. So, can Faramir win three coin flips in a row? Well, I, I think it's a little bit of an oversimplification. I think um, Paladin versus Druid is still pretty good on the Paladin side. Yeah. Uh, the only exception is if they somehow get like Emperor Thorson out and you don't have an answer to it. Uh, but generally speaking, you should still be okay. And then Shaman is gotten a, is still pretty good against Druid because they can't answer Hex plus Tempo plays. You know, like they, they still haven't found an easy way to deal with Feral Spirits early on. And if you can get out Manatai Totem or if he plays Fire Guard Destroyer, for example, and that's a 6-6 six, six for a four mana play. It's like that kills Drew to the claw. It's like, well, what do you do at that point? Well, if he gets a seven, then maybe BGH. Um, the game number three is ready, and we're going to see Druid versus Paladin. And uh, from my experience, like I really like having early game as a Paladin, just to try rushing the Druid, having the true silver when it matters. Yep, that's Everyone a fair shame. point. I, I personally like it as well. Must for battle, excellent here. Uh, Gar doesn't have wild growth, but uh, he though. does. He does cash it in. What do you think about that? Would you have gone for the cash in on the shave next Ramus, or would you innervate on turn two, pot shredder, and turn three shredder, which makes you more susceptible to like consecration, I guess. Uh, I, I personally, I think I would go for innervate shredder two and shade free. So, like, using Innervate to just uh, fix your curve. Right now, he doesn't have a play on turn 3. He, um, he needs a top deck. But then again, he has a free free on board. But he gets, oh. he gets damage in. Yeah, he gets damage in. But I don't think you have to be that aggressive in this matchup. He needs a rough now. Savage Roar? What is Guard doing? Like, you could have the same thing with just using Shapeshift, right? Yeah, you could have done the same exact thing with uh, the hero power. It seems like I'm actually really curious about that myself. He just wanted to do damage. Uh, well, I think Gara is playing really quick and not necessarily thinking through everything here. Um, because using keeping that savage work could be super important to ending the game. He's just trying to be really aggressive against Paladin, but now Paladin can seize the the board. Well, not entirely, because there, there's still the pilot shredder, and uh, Paladin right now has um, juggler and a dude. But uh, but yeah, like Gara is behind right now. Um, that was that was maybe he thought like uh, Shade still has one health, uh, one attack. That, that's why he needs to use Sajor, so... Because he's playing so fast, he made that misplay. Oh! 
Keeper. Draw. But uh, there is a turn five play for Faramir. He can play the quartermaster and kill off the keeper of the growth. This is just lightning fast at this point. Yeah, both players are playing really fast. All right, pilot shredder and a hero power. Okay, Shaden X Ramus. Shaden X Ramus uh, is better protected. Pilot shredder would just get contested by the hero power or the weapon of the Light's Justice plus the quartermaster. But of course, his opponent has an easy way to deal with this. So, um, even though Gara has the Ancient of Lore, Faramir does have all the endgame cards. He has that Sylvanas, he has Equality Consecration, he even has the Zombie Child, True Silver, Tyrion. Uh, seems like Faramir will be favored to, to win the long game. And um, Gara had to use the Keeper, uh, had to use the Keeper of the Grove uh, already, so Tyrion might be a troublesome card to get through. Yeah, this is where this is where the Savage Roar would have been a lot more useful. Savage Roar, the the shade trade into the Sylvanas attack, but um, you know, as a result, he has to use Wrath instead. His life just got a little bit more complicated, and now that True Silver can come down, pretty sure Paladin can just start turning this game around right here. Yeah, they're definitely looking good for Farmir. Uh, even though he's taking some damage what? here, he has to. Do you Doomsayer is so crazy. No, he can still have quality. Lame tongue. Well, that's funny. Oh, Gara needs cards now. That's for sure. He needs to draw those cards. So Pichao. Well, if you go so aggressive, you never want to see that. This like double wild growth now. Doesn't look double good. Double wild growth is awful. Z Zombie Chow is still the play, but why would you play it in the middle? Oh, you uh, protect to from avoid the GH. Big game hunter, yeah. But it doesn't really protect it too much. You can still take it out. You can still take out the uh, the Zombie Chow and then play big game hunter anyways. It's just yeah. a small thing to make your opponent uh, inconvenienced. It indirectly gives your Zombie Chow taunt if your opponent has big game hunter. And uh, Farmer even picking up the lay on hands. So now he has everything he needs to win this game. Tyrion hits the board. Unless he has Black Knight. No, oh, Sylvanas. No Interesting. Time. Sylvanas is not, it's not terrible, but... No, I mean, what if Sylvanas takes Tyrion? Well, that would be amazing. But then... Maybe you just attack with everything. Oh, wait, you can't reduce the attack of your own minion, so, hmm. I guess you just spawn more dudes. Like, you want to have more minions on board so that you reduce the chance of Sylvanas taking something. Mm. You can deal 11 points of damage now and reduce the attack of 5-5. Five, five. You can also kill Sylvanas on your own terms, kind of. Maybe that has some merit. Like, play Aldor. Into the 5-5, five five. I play the dude, and then attack Sylvanas. And he's going to do that. Giving Zombie Chow, or... Oh, no, just do. one one instead. That, that doesn't help. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, and now you Shredder and Aldor, and this game is almost over. I like the attack into Sylvanas, like preemptive attack and uh, just killing her on your own terms before they silence your stuff or or maybe like swipe your board again to increase the chances of stealing the, the bigger quality minion. Yeah, this is not a really good situation. Uh, pretty much nothing you can do. I think Wild Growth wouldn't really draw any better minions either. 7, 10 13. Plus 18, that's it with consecration. Yep. That is lethal. And you don't even get to capitalize on your opponent's zombie chow for giving you life because you don't have anything to deal with it. So Farmer stays alive in the series. And uh, Gar is going to have to use Druid against Shaman or other Druid. See if he can turn this around. So Gara was playing so fast, but now he has to stay around and play one more at least, or maybe two more. Depends what's happening. 
That's right, man. Garo wants to take it easy, man. Have a a good rest of the night. But because he rushed a little bit too quickly, maybe he ended up costing himself. Who knows? Uh, The reality is that's a tougher matchup still for Druid. So uh, Paladin does have the edge in that capacity. And Faramir is a great player. So if you give him a chance, he's just going to take it and take the win. Uh, Right now, he just needs to win the Druid versus Druid and Shaman versus Druid, where I feel Shaman... The Farmer's build might be good versus Druid, might be better. So it's, it might be shifting a bit. Like, not a f- a clean 50 50, but as you, as, you, as you said, like maybe 52, 55%. Will really depend. And um, and then Druid versus Druid is is re- really a tough match. And depends what you get and how you handle the decisions during the plays. I personally, I don't like that matchup. I don't like playing it. I feel like a lot of stuff is um, outside of my control when I play it. Druid versus Druid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is, uh, but it isn't to a certain extent. You know, it's um, all you have to do is make sure to follow your curve as best as you can. Pick the right trades. Recognize the opportunity to be aggressive. I know uh, Admirable is one of the most outspoken people where he feels like people... You know, for a while, he felt like people weren't playing Druid versus Druid in the most optimal way because he said it was a difficult opportunity for people to recognize when they could be aggressive or defensive. So, you know, maybe the opinions changed since Druid's been figured out so much more. You know, for example, it's been a long time since we've seen Druid. It's almost a year now, right, since Druid's introduced the combo to the metagame. Yeah, combo was, uh, has been super popular for the last year. All right, the game number four is starting here. Farm, you're bringing, bringing Druid versus Garus Druid. Wildgrove, Shade, Shredder for Farmir. And a very bad hand for Gara. Yeah, Gara has pretty much no play. Wow, for the next five turns, he's going to need a lot of help. And his opponent had Coin Wildgrove, like you said. This is bad news. Really bad news. Gars this looks really unhappy. And Especially if the just matchup. curves out, this matchup might already be over. Just solely if based Farmer, off of the way he drew. Yeah, and if Farmer gets it, like even double swipe is still uh, getting a lot of damage. With Innervate, he will be able to place Sylvanas next turn. Farmer, if he gets um, an Innervate, then Dr. Boom on five, that will be huge. Yeah. Azure Drake. Still a great card on five. Okay, so the Sylvanas is a really problematic thing. Um, Farmir most likely will have to do something about it, but the Sylvanas will get value no matter what. It will pick up at worst the Pilot Shredder's drop. Um, and it's not like I you can ignore Sylvanas either. I think maybe you can actually ignore Sylvanas this turn. If you ignore Sylvanas and play Azure Drake, you will be able to force next turn and then try to um, give uh, your opponent a 2 2 charge. It really works like that, though. Okay, well, uh, let's see. Um, the Sludge Belcher does complicate it, too. Because Sludge Belcher drop means your opponent's force of nature goes a lot into the Sludge Belcher. Uh, can you can you swipe? I think you can actually swipe here. Still, you could, but then Sylvanas becomes like a board. Like they have to, they can clear until Sylvanas, and then um, then develop something else. Yeah, but on the other hand, um, swipe see, swipe looks so good that. Uh, well, Sylvanas just um, did her role. Like you, you are coming back with Sylvanas. So you swipe, you kill the dude that's being being spawned by the Shredder, and then you can you either kill it or you go for face. And the opponent has to trade his dudes in Sylvanas and play his own on, on turn six, where turn six is not great for Druid. And then you follow up with your stuff. Like if you just kill one of those dudes with Sylvanas and play Belcher. Um, I think that's still fine, like you're getting more value from Sylvanas. But I still like like just um, 
getting all the board here. Like Farmir, if Farmir plays a Force of Nature now, he has a chance to, to deny Sylvanas. Or it also gives, um, there was also a chance for a Keeper of the Grove top deck. Oh, it's 50-50. And he takes the Pilot Shredder, that's not good. That's the worst. I think you still kill it. And yeah. there is a Doomsayer now. Well, oh, the Wraith helps him clear off the... Uh, the Shade now. Look at that, Drew the Claw. Yeah, Druid is a great draw. Something to do, you know, as opposed to before when he couldn't really do much. Now the question becomes, do you put the Druid the Claw in charge mode or top mode? Uh, here, yeah, you do charge because you have combo, you have swipe, and there is a possibility of, uh, of a Black Knight. There is that silence, one turn too late for Sylvanas. Um, but Dr. Boom is going to dominate this board. Oh man, what a big draw. Ancient of Lore is pretty significant though. Yeah, but Snagara is taking so much damage next turn. Yeah, but I mean you you also can press for damage too, right? Yeah, you can. You can um get them to 19 and um there there might be afraid of an innervate combo, especially after innervate and having so many cards in, in hand. So Gara doesn't pick up innervate, but he's definitely threatening one. And if Faramir senses that he can use, he can drop Lothab and um Andrew the Claw. He can swipe double as swipe. well and take care of the board here. Yeah, double swipe is really powerful. Oh, even like hmm. Ooh, <laughs> that's Dream terrible. Claw survives. That's terrible. Yeah, it is really terrible. Well, at least Dr. Boom uh, can get the full damage in. So Gara can't combo now. Um, he can't really play Boom. He can't Scenario. Well, I, he might be forced to play Boom. Yeah. Scenarios, and, but he's dead to Savage Roar. Is he dead to whatever there is? It's 8, 10, 15, 17. How much mana is that? 9, 11? Um, yeah, he's dead. I think it's exactly full. That's nine damage, so he needs nine more, right? And he has nine more in hand, so um, he, he, eleven. Oh, you're damage. right. Oh, so you're right. He forgot innervate. The innervate here. Yeah. So Farmir missing lethal here. No. Oh. Well, he did attack into bomb. A natural mistake. Uh oh, he realizes. <laughs> he realized like, that he has lethal. Oh. That's awkward. <laughs> now we have to play lost, I believe. Oh, Farmir. Is that why he didn't want to put his cam on today? Because he's not feeling good? <laughs> Possibly. Oh boy. Didn't shave. Now you have to like not show the Drew of the Claw or the Swipe. Because then it's like, oh, well then Gar realized he missed lethal. Or maybe you do that. Maybe you're like, uh, actually I did miss lethal. And I'm still going to beat you. Well, he's not showing that he missed lethal because he's not showing Swipe. And uh, this is a super powerful board, especially after playing Lothab. There is that Lothal for Gara, but I think Farmir still has it. Like, you attack the 4 6 with a 7 7. Mm, maybe that bomb will be important. Actually, if Farmir is able to kill the 5 5 with the, with the bomb, can he protect Any himself? <laughs> yeah, can he protect himself with scenarios? Um... I don't think so. No, he's still dead to uh, swipe shape shifts. Yeah, because uh, then the swipe phase, um, you shape shift one of the towns and then you kill another one with a 2-3. What if you... No, can't do no. it. So There's... what if you Savage Roar and then like do some trades like Dr. Boom into the taunt um, hero power into the the keeper of the grove and Boombot hits into Doctor Boom and you do four damage you <laughs> kill it. It's like yeah, it's really idealistic. Yeah, and you can't hero power anymore because uh, Savage is eight. 
So keeper, silence. Oh, he's dropping it. Okay. Yeah, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, just a big whiff here. I thought he was going to trade his Dr. Boom in uh, seven, 7 for the 7-7, seven, seven, but that was uh, not really the play that Garo was looking for. Just really no way out of that scenario reliably. Like You could always uh, concoct a really fringe scenario of RNG where he could be um, fishing for the answer, but not in that case. Oh, man, we are going to game number five again. That was serious right. today. So close. Yeah, it's been going in five every time. Um, this is kind of what people really wanted to see with Kick Conquest. A lot of the mix-up of uh, matchups and not just the 3-0 sweep. So uh, I think this last one's going to be Shaman, uh, Shaman versus the Druid. And you know, I got I to gotta hand it to Farmir, man. If he's targeting the Druid, it's been very effective so far. Yeah, he is definitely targeting the Druid 2-0 now. And um, if Shaman is preferred for the Druid, and I believe it is, with... The cards that we've seen in the previous matchup. That might be the downfall of Gara, the best shaman, not the best druid. Yeah, definitely not the best druid at the moment. Uh, he's floundering a little bit. The druid hasn't really done too much. Um, have to kind of wonder, like, if uh, if his list of the druids even the best way to go about things at the moment. It feels like Druid has been pretty standard though for a long time. Like no one's really like no one's really changing Druid too much outside of like completely going the other direction, like uh Tides of Times fatigue druid, right? Yeah. I think like yeah. Druid is one of the classes that has the most cards that are stable. Like you you have ten cards that are in every deck always. Innervate. Keeper of uh, the Grove, like Keeper of the Grove the Why? Edge of Lore, probably Swipe, Wrath. Like you, don't, you always have those cards, whatever kind of Druid you're playing. So um, maybe like I really hope that Blizzard will introduce more Druid cards in the next expansion when it releases, maybe like in a in a next four uh, five months that will refresh the class and offer more playstyles, like they did with Warrior, like Green Patron, right? Like now, right now, Warrior is totally different, and it's so amazing that when uh, we are saying. Hey, he's facing warrior. It's probably control. We are not saying that anymore. It's like, what kind of warrior is he facing? And that's that's amazing. And maybe with druid, this it will be the same. Like, is it combo druid or is it like we had combo and taunt, but they were still not that different. Like, you basically use the same mechanics, but maybe there will be a druid like a, a full heal, like control, Sarah control, whatever, where you just want to survive as long as possible, and it works. Maybe, hopefully. Makes sense. Uh, here we go. Uh, looks like game five is about to begin here. So, you know, if uh, if Gar is able to pull us out, he's going to try and see if he can secure his standings position. Farmer, in the meantime, uh, I don't know how well Farmer's actually done. Do you know these guys' record at all, Nish? Um, The record, like, overall, or? Yes, so Another? far. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, actually, I can I can look that up. Just give me a second. I'm not sure what's uh, what's the exact record yet. I can quickly check that up. Oh. All right. Well, I'll put a pin in that, man. Let's let's get ready for the game here. Uh, Shaman versus Druid. I think the Shaman really needs to get off to a really quick start. Um, if it's caught hero powering a lot, then Druid can easily capitalize. And you know that's where things like the Druid needs to get that wild growth going so that way he can climb on the board really easily. Sludge Belchers, Pilot Shredders, those cards are generally pretty problematic because they have so many stickiness and they challenge everything on the board pretty easily. By the way, I got the records for us just in case. So currently, out of 16 pros, Faramir is at 15th place. 15th place, wow. Um, Followed up by RDU being the 16th player. Uh, Gara is steadily at 7th. Interesting, interesting. Who's who's first? Uh, the player who's first is Life Coach. Oh, Life Coach just... Fresh Car Reynad. That's our top three for for now. With the best scores. Reynad's in third. Oh, yes, Reynad is third. Like he's winning when we cast him here. That's true. Who knew? 
Well, yeah. uh, you know, the pilot shredder coming down here, that's already starting to become problematic. You want to draw the fire guard destroyer. Five, six, pretty average. Oh, the come on. For four mana. At five, uh, six for four mana, Frodan. That it's, it's five mana, technically. It costs you another one. Um, All right. That's still good. Yeah, it's pretty effective. And the most important amazing. thing about the five attack is that it challenges a lot of the, uh, the a lot of the minions that come out anyways. You know, Sludge Belcher, for example. Ancient of Lore. Yeah, five is definitely a magical number. Like, four is easy to get, and a lot of stuff with four health is um, dying pretty easy. But then five is is the when the big stuff ha is happening. That was pretty good for farm there. Hexing the four free. Wow, he's got so much respect for the pilot shredder that he's gonna hex it. So that way he can um, comfortably get past it. Oh man. Oh, he didn't like the frog. Don't you think frog was threatening? Well, it's funny because the frog gets buffed in the savage roar if you wanted yeah. to. Frog in the stuff. I uh, hear a pretty good swipe for Gara. Uh, with Shapeshift, he can deal with the whole board. Uh, I think you can even attack with the Shade. Like, Shade is protected by the frog, and um, you've just seen Hex. Yeah, uh, but what can your opponent do on six mana? I suppose he could fire a little mental. Then you challenge it. Yeah, I, I guess I wouldn't have minded the attack there. We know Urshock would have shut it down both ways, but yeah. it would have been interesting to see. Angel of Lauren 7 is great for Gara. Angel of Lauren 7 was one of the best there in 7th place um, before GVG. And now it feels just okay. Well, uh, I mean, so many things are good at grabbing tempo now. Um, Wow, Gara holds yet again. He's gonna really try to see if he can milk this Savage Roar as, as far as he can go. It's the game plan. In two turns, if he gets um, the combo, then Shade of Maxramas will re represent 10 points of damage. That's a lot. Oh just... man, that Fire Guard Destroyer just hitting a 4 6. Pitifully weak. Yeah, poor destroyer. Gar is just growing on us with that shade on Axramas. Hmm. There's a lot of ways you can play this turn. You can utilize Innervate to put out upwards of ten mana of stuff. I think Innervate is good. Uh if you if you like play Lothab and Shredder, because you do have that scenarios next turn. That's Ooh. true. If you play Lothab, then he can't leverage uh, Lightning Storm as powerfully as he'd like to. And yeah, sure you might be able to go for, yeah, you might be able to go for the Scenarius buffs next turn. The question is, do you attack this turn, though? Um, you didn't attack for so many turns, so you might actually keep it. Shaman is not threatening that much damage. Uh, only three cards in hand. Four, six, two, three is not great. It's not like he's going to hero power the a money berserker. You, you can put like a funny totem on the head and say, "Hey, a money berserker has a funny hat now." So it is kind of enraged. All right, he's going for the trades. All right, so he. Ops to go for the safest route in terms of uh, dealing with the minions on board. Forces opponent to trade a lot, but the most important thing that is happening right now is that Shaman's giving up his board, um, and Centarius is going to absolutely devastate this board right here. Yeah, this buff will be amazing. Plus six, plus six. So it's basically 11-14 for Holy nine mana. Cow. This is nuts! Look, Look at the zombie bold. chow. Like this is the zombie boss from the nightmares. This is Nemesis from Resident Evil. Here. <laughs> wow. That's exactly what's going on. He's gonna need a lot of help from this Drake. Drake into lightning storm into lightning bolt, and even then. Yeah, with Savage Roar, it should be over next turn. Um, all right, maybe it's not over, but how much 
damage is it? This is 8 plus 5, that's 13 plus 8. 21, 22. Not yet. Yeah, not yet, but still very strong. And you can start pushing more damage again and build up the board. Just double drop here. Play a big minion. Play the Sludge Belcher. I mean, Sylvanas is okay too. Just anything, really. So that Savage War is lethal. How does Shaman deal with this board? Uh, Doomsayer. Oh, yeah, actually. So is it going to be the Doomsayer? No, that's Mana Wraith again. Farm, you're calling yeah, those Mana Wraith. I mean, it's always one of those things where you don't want it to be Doomsayer or Mana Wraith, generally speaking, because it complicates things, but. So okay here. It looks like Gara is going to take this game, win the series three to two, and improve. Faramir still struggling. He's in fifteenth place, and he's got another match coming up after this against Strife Crow. And if he drops that, then uh, I don't know where Faramir sits. He might actually be threatened to be in the sixteenth spot here. Yeah, it's certainly possible. Uh, but still, um. Not counting them as lethal, well played by both players, and um, again, like a very high level match. I, I like Farmir bringing Shaman though, like even though Shaman kind of killed Farmir because he never won a game with it. Uh, I liked how he played it, how he brought the list he trusted in, and um, you know, trying those destroyers and uh, trying Neptune and other cards, and definitely a, a good feat. Yeah, I agree. I think Fireguard Destroyer still is the awkward card here. Um... People haven't figured out if they like playing Unbound with it yet. I personally think it's an awesome card. Just, you know, you don't want you don't want another thing complicating your Azure Drake turn. There's a reason why three mana is the overcrowded spot in Shaman, because you play all the overloads that turn, turn four you recover, turn five you drake. Yeah. So maybe maybe we'll figure something out. I'm sure the Shaman experts, fake, you know, Gooby, other people who've played a lot of Shaman will figure it out. For now, we'll just, you know, we'll put it on hold and we'll see if someone can come up later. In the meantime, that wraps up our third series of the Day Nymph. And we have one more coming up. That's Strife Crow. I believe Farmer is going to play again. We're going to need a few minutes just to reset and get everything up, set up uh, for that match. So hang tight, guys. When we come back, we're going to have the last match of week six here at the Pro-Am Tournament.